Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Next, the Labour MP, Keith Vass, could be investigated by a Commons sleaze watchdog and reported to the police over claims he paid two male escorts for sex. The 59-year-old, who is married with two children, is in charge of a group of MPs which investigate issues connected to crime. They're currently carrying out a report on prostitution laws. Mr Vaz has indicated he will tell us all tomorrow if he'll stand aside as the head of that committee, which he's chaired for nine years. Here, is, here he is in action. Nobody is questioning our integrity. It's your judgment we're questioning. This is not a television game show. No, this is a serious question about serious issues. Can I say on behalf of this committee that we have found your evidence most unsatisfactory? Gary Lineker thought the idea of Leicester winning was so far-fetched that he said if they did win, he would present match of the day in his underwear. We do not uh, believe that we've come to the end of uh, the factual situation. Are you confident? that there is proper and appropriate leadership. What is your message to young people who want to get involved in drugs? Do you regret signing the contract saying you would agree to provide these people? Do you re not regret making that appointment? Why have you not resigned? <laughs> Well, Keith Vaz has also apologised public publicly to his wife and children for the, quote, hurt and distress he's caused them. The Conservative MP, Andrew Bridgen, who's MP in neighbouring north-west Leicestershire, has told this programme he's writing to the Parliamentary Commissioner for Standards over the allegations and may report Mr Vaz to the police. I think uh, misconduct in, in public office and also conspiracy to supply a controlled substance, they're both criminal offences. And, and the fact that Keith Vaz is prevaricating over even uh, resigning as chairman of the Home Affairs Select Committee when he's, he's brought Parliament into such disrepute and himself, I think is, is an absolutely, it's amazing. Should he resign as chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee? He certainly should resign as, as chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee and, uh, and quite honestly, I, I have long been of the opinion that Keith Vaz is not a fit person, in fact, to be a member of Parliament. And I, I would call on the people of Leicester, I think you know an awful lot about Mr Vaz's various activities, to come forward now to the police and the authorities and, and let's see what he's been really doing. Right. Everything is an allegation at this stage, but you're clearly saying he should not carry on as chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee, not even temporarily standing aside. He should resign. And you're saying he should resign as a Labour MP? I'm, uh, I have serious concerns over Keith Vaz's activities uh, for some time. And I think um, there's a lot more to come out about Keith Vaz. That's what I think. And hopefully it will. Isn't this a classic tabloid sting? That's certainly what Keith Vaz himself is, seems to be saying. It's entrapment, deeply troubling that a national newspaper, he says, should have paid individuals who've acted in this way. Um, I think there's a legitimate uh, public interest. Uh, people do have a right to a private life. But when you're the chairman of the Home Affairs Select Committee, it's a, a, a particular role where he report making reports on the police, policing. Uh, he's recently produced a in-depth recommendations of what Parliament should do to deal with uh, prostitution. And then to actually be using prostitutes himself um, and people can sh surely see the, the conflict of interest that arises from that. I mean, n none of us are, are, uh, are perfect. We live in an imperfect world, but I think there are limits to it. And Keith Faz has, has well overstepped that mark. And there are, there are other things going on as well that um, um, have been going on for quite, quite a long time. I, I actually myself have, have dropped information to the police in Leicestershire regarding Keith Faz uh, several times over... Uh, the last uh, 18 months and his position is completely untenable and he brings Parliament really into disrepute by hanging on like this uh, when he should do the decent thing and resign but I mean I don't think Keith Faz knows the decent thing to do. Again I repeat there are allegations at this stage. Jeremy Corbyn, his boss, Labour leader, has said it's a private matter, he hasn't broken the law. 
Um, Jeremy Corbyn, uh, well, I think the Labour Party have got enough turmoil themselves. They, they really didn't need this, but it, it's come It's come. I mean, I'm, the, the, your viewing public can judge out there what, uh, what they think um, Keith Vaz should do and they can, the relevance of, of Jeremy Corbyn's remarks uh, on that. I, I'll, I'll just say again, I, I believe that these revelations in the mirror uh, or the newspapers now, they, I believe that's the tip of the iceberg about Mr Vaz's activities and uh, I think there's a lot more to come out about, about him. Conservative MP Andrew Bridgen. Well, let's talk now to three people who either live or work in Leicester, where Keith Vaz is the local MP. Ricky Shah, uh, who's met the MP a couple of times. Karen Moda, who runs a fashion boutique business in Keith Vaz's constituency. And Dharmesh Lakhani, who's a restaurant owner who's known Mr Vaz for more than 30 years. And you also know each other as well. Ricky Shah, what should Mr Vaz do now? Um, I think, obviously, based on the allegations, I think you know he should resign from the Home Affairs Select Committee because he's in a you know in a national position. You know you can't put yourself in these kind of situations. We're all allowed a private life, of course, but when you're a public figure and you use the media yourself to kind of get more popular and promote yourself, unfortunately, there's a, the downfall of that is the opposite side, which are which are kind of the, your private life affairs. Don't you want to hear his side of the story first? Um, we've heard his side of the story many times. It's not obviously the first time. Um, like, and like I said, you know, everyone's entitled to a private life. Um, and yes, he deserves a, you know, his side. But we're talking about a well-educated man. You know, he's able to make his own decisions. He's very strategic in what he's done in terms of where you get to. And also, you know, he has a lot of support around him as well. So he should be able to make these decisions. He's not a naive person. He's a very clever man. Um, Karen Moda, do you think we expect MPs to behave in a different way than the rest of us? Hi there, good morning. Good morning. Um, well, obviously, MPs should dictate themselves in, uh, in a different mannerism because purely because they are a public figure. So they are out there in the world serving their constituency. But however, as Ricky um, highlighted, that those people who uh, are entitled to a private life, so what he does in his private life is completely different. And again, I personally think he is innocent until proven guilty because these are just, um, as we said before, are just allegations. Yeah. Ricky, despite the fact that they're just allegations, Ricky Shah wants him to stand down as chairman of the Home Affairs Select Committee. Do you think he should do that or not? I think it would be sensible for him to stand down. However, um, he himself is a well-educated man, a solicitor by trade. So I think he knows what the best uh, move is. Okay. But personally, the most sensible thing would be to stand out. Dharmesh Lakhani, thanks for talking to us. A friend of Keith Vaz for many years. How did you react to the allegations? Obviously, I was shocked. Uh, but as, as we say, they are allegations. And uh, when I think of Keith, I look at all the work he's done within the city, championing the city, this very diversity we have. And um, yes, I was very shocked. But when people are calling for him to stand down as an MP for the local area, or for Leicester East. I totally disagree with that. If you, if you look at the good he's done here, the amount of surgeries he holds and the amount of issues he uh, helps to take through for um, many of the constituents, I mean, that's, that's a different question there, really. He's very good at his job. Yeah, although you will have heard Conservative MP Andrew Bridgen saying he, he's, he's effectively brought Parliament into disrepute. I mean, as I said, as, as Curran quite rightly said, is, is innocent in t until proven guilty. And uh, this was a sting operation by a national newspaper. And I think we've, we've seen and heard of many of these in the past and how reliable they are. I mean, you've got to wait. Um, Keith is uh, in a very powerful position in the Home Affairs Select Committee. It's not been long since he questioned a very, very powerful media entrepreneur and um, I mean you're right he is in a powerful position on that committee a committee which at the moment is looking at the prostitu prostitution legislation in this country is there not a potential conflict of interest there of course there is of course there is but if, if at the end of the day is, is innocent until proven guilty if he can step aside from that and leave that one out um, in local government in the council they often have issues where um, councillors for certain areas have to step aside. Maybe this is one thing that Keith would have to step aside on. Ricky Shah, is this story in the public interest? Um, yes, I think it's in the public interest because of the fact that he's a public figure. 
you know, I, I understand, you know, I know Darmesh and Curran very well, and I know the good work that Keith Faz does in obviously the area, the local area. But when you're in a position of power, you know, on a national scale, you need to reflect, you know, on, on how you behave and what you get kind of caught up into. Like I said, he's a well-educated man, you know. We've, we've kind of said that before, but, you know, you, if you're in your own home or your flat, the public kind of issue is where, you know, how is that money being kind of come from? Where does it come from? Does it come from his expenses? Where is it all coming from? Yes, innocent and proven to guilty, but it is very important to understand that he is a public figure and okay. you can't keep coming back up from these kind of issues. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much for your time. And in a statement, Mr Vaz says, it's deeply troubling that a national newspaper should have paid individuals who've acted in this way. I've referred the allegations to my solicitor who will consider them carefully and advise me accordingly. As we've been reporting this morning, Conservative MP Andrew Bridgham has told this programme that he's considering reporting the Labour politician Keith Vaz to the Metropolitan Police over claims Mr Vaz paid two male escorts for sex. Mr Bridgham, who's the MP for neighbouring North East Leicestershire, told us he's also writing to the Parliamentary Commissioner for Standards over Mr Vaz's alleged behaviour. Let's talk now to Labour MP Simon Danchuk, whose personal life has been the subject of tabloid newspaper stories. He's currently suspended from the Labour Party after admitting sending lewd texts to a 17-year-old, although points out he hasn't broken any laws. Hello, Mr Danchuk. Thank you very much for talking to us. How do you react to the allegations involving Keith Vaz? Well, I have some sympathy with Keith. He's been, it's clearly a tabloid uh, sting in, in relation to what's happened. Uh, I think there are issues about uh, his moral standing. I've, I've no doubt about that. And, and in terms of whether there's any hypocrisy there, but in terms of legalities, I don't believe he's uh, committed any crimes. That's my understanding of the situation. I think we should be very sympathetic, uh, especially to his wife and to his children. They'll be going through hell uh, because of the media attention that they're getting. But also have sympathy for Keith as well. I mean, he's obviously been struggling with his sexuality for quite some time and, and, and for it to come out in this way is probably not helpful to him. Having been yourself in the, in the middle of similar sorts of situations, what do you think Mr Vaz will be experiencing right now? Give us some kind of insight, if you can, to our, for our audience. Well, you, you feel like a rabbit caught in the headlights, really, no matter how much media experience you've had in the run-up to this type of uh, experience. And it, I, I'm sure he'll be struggling with it. He'll be having conversations with his family, trying to reassure them. Uh, there'll be a lot of uh, press intrusion and interest in uh, what he's doing and where he's going. Uh, he'll find all that uh, very difficult. But, you know, I'm sure he, he's a strong character. I'm sure he'll cope with it and I'm sure he'll come through it. Do you think we as society judge politicians more harshly than we do people in other walks of life? Well, I think the wider public, and that's way beyond social media, which tends to have a, a very negative focus view on politicians, but the wider public, I think, are quite sympathetic. They, they have a keen interest in what our private lives uh, entail. They, they have a curiosity about that, and that's why tabloid newspapers print the stories that they do, and I don't think we should... Uh, condemn newspapers for doing that. That's the nature of uh, the press in uh, Britain. But I also think that the public really, as well as having that curiosity, a lost a less condemnatory uh, of politicians about their private lives. They're curious, but they don't want to condemn them necessarily. You're, as I mentioned briefly, currently suspended from the Labour Party for uh, allegedly sexting a 17-year-old. That, that inquiry seems to be taking a very long time. You were recently in the newspapers for two for, for other areas of your private life. How much do you take responsibility for these kind of things emerging into the public domain? Oh yeah, I, there's no doubt about it. I'm, I'm not blaming the press and I just said that the tabloids do their uh, work and focus on the private lives of politicians and celebrities and all the rest of it and that's the nature of the media. I don't condemn them, condemn them for that uh, at all. I take full responsibility for what I do in my private life in relation to some of the allegations that you've mentioned. I've already apologised and it's right and proper that I've done that. And I'm sure that uh, Keith is regretful for some of what's happened and the way that it's come out uh, and it will be very difficult for him at this time. Finally, should Mr Vaz stand down as chairman of the Home Affairs Select Committee? Should he resign as a Labour MP as, as Conservative Andrew Bridgen is uh, demanding? 
No, Andrew's got this completely wrong. There's, there's no reason for, for uh, Keith to stand down as a Member of Parliament. I think it's wholly inappropriate for Andrew Brigden to call for, for, for this. Uh, Keith, Keith's a very good parliamentarian. He's very well regarded. That's why he gets uh, so much support. And he's a very good uh, Member of Parliament for the constituency uh, that he represents and he should carry on being an MP. With regard to chairing the Home Affairs Select Committee, uh, I understand that he'll discuss that with members of that committee. It's an elected position you have to bear in mind, so he's, he's there uh, by favour of uh, parliamentarians uh, and he'll consider his position and I understand that. There are suggestions of hypocrisy, there are issues around the morality of what's been going on, there's no doubt about that. But at the same time I think we should have some sympathy for the situation in which he and his family find themselves. Thank you very much, Mr Danchuk. Thanks for coming on the programme. Simon Danchuk, who is the Labour MP for Rochdale. Next, a tabloid, a tabloid story about a senior politician, male prostitutes and allegations of an offer to pay for cocaine. Labour's Keith Vass is an elected Member of Parliament who's also chairman of a powerful parliamentary committee that scrutinises government policy on prostitution and drugs. Today, members of that committee will be hearing from Mr Vass on whether he intends to resign or step aside for a bit. The husband and father of two certainly doesn't seem shy about what's happened. He appeared in Parliament yesterday to ask a question of the new Home Secretary. But could or should that appearance in the Commons be one of Keith Vaz's last? Let's talk to our political guru, Norman Smith. So this meeting between the Home Affairs Select Committee and Mr Vaz, he's going to give his side of the story and then what? Well, I think Mr Vaz is going to face enormous pressure to step down. He'll give his defence, if you like. He will argue that uh, he hasn't broken any laws. What he does in his private life is entirely up to him. And he'll also be critical of newspaper for paying the prostitutes for this story. But he will face demands to go. And if he doesn't go, I'm told he'll be given 24 hours to reflect on his position. The committee will then reconvene and the expectation is they may then try and hold a vote of no confidence in his position. Now, we're in uncharted territories. No one's ever done this before, hold a vote of no confidence in a committee chairman. They're not even sure whether it would make any difference, whether it would have any authority, whether you can oust a committee chairman. But significantly, I think the mood is now hardening against him. I was speaking to one Labour figure on the committee who said to me that Labour members are not inclined to support him. Now, that would seem to me to suggest he is going to have an awfully difficult job to hang on to his position. I expect what he'll do today is say, look, I'm prepared to stand aside temporarily. That, however, I suspect will not be enough for members of the committee and I expect he will either recognise that and stand down or will be forced to stand down tomorrow. OK, thank you very much, uh, Norman Smith. Well, let's talk to former Labour MP and London Mayor Ken Livingstone, uh, who joins us outside his home in north-west London. So Labour members of the Home Affairs Select Committee, and Norman Smith says, are not inclined to support Keith Vaz. Do you? Well, I think someone's private life should be private. I remember 35 years ago in the run-up to the GLC election, reporters came to me with evidence that the Tory leader, um, my opponent, was having an affair. They got pictures of women going in and out uh, of the flat he was renting and so on. And I said, I'm not running with that. We're running on the issue of cutting fares and I'm not going to use those sort of personal smears. And I regret that here in the, the, the Sunday Mirror, I, they decided that this is more important than the serious issues such as the economy. He's the chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee, which conducts inquiries into drugs and prostitution. He's alleged mm. to have offered to fund the buying of cocaine. He's alleged to have used male prostitutes. Don't you think that's a conflict of interest? Well, I mean, let's see what if it turns out to be true. I mean, I could spend the next half hour recounting to you all the stories you've seen about me in the press, which turned out not to be true. And I think what I find particularly um, ridiculous about this is I can recall being at Labour Party conferences and watching a uh, journalist there going up to their hotel um, room with prostitutes they picked up from the streets. I mean, all across our society, the people that pay for sex, I don't approve of that. I don't okay, do it if myself. It's, if it's um, true... But if it's, I don't think it's illegal. If it's true... Would you accept that that is a conflict of interest with his position as chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee? 
No, I don't, I don't think the fact that if it turns out to be true and he has paid for sex, that that prevents him from actually conducting the inquiry into prostitution and the problems of prostitution. The, prosti the problems of prostitution are what happens to the poor prostitutes, uh, not so much their clients. Aren't you concerned that a Labour colleague of yours is allegedly exploiting young immigrant men for sex? I mean, let, let's see what turns out to be true about all of this. I've known Keith Baz, I mean, must be 40 years. And he's been a good campaigner on a whole range of issues about social justice. And in all that time, I mean, I never recalled him talking about sex or anything like that, or drugs. He was always focused on what he could do to actually make life better for his constituents or the wider community. If it's true, surely that would alarm you, that he was exploiting such young men, potentially vulnerable young men, for sex. Well, let's see how vulnerable they are. I mean, the reality is, though, do you judge someone's political career on the basis of one incident like this or the total work of, of over four decades? And everybody makes mistakes. I mean, well, how many I mean, some of the some newspapers today have had an affair. Yeah, some newspapers today are reporting that he's visited male prostitutes before. I mean, let's see what turns out to be true. The simple fact is, don't judge somebody on one mistake they make in their life or even a couple of mistakes. I mean, it's the total um, that he's done for other people right the way in his own constituency and up and down Britain. He's always been on the side of justice and that can't just all be swept away by one mistake that he's made. Worth repeating, there are allegations, as, as you rightly say, at this stage. Um, could I ask you briefly about your own position? You're still suspended from the Labour Party for, quote, bringing mm. the party into disrepute over, uh, disrepute over comments you made about Hitler mm. and Zionism. W uh, have you had any mm. conversation with the party about a way back? I, well, basically, I'm still, it's now four months since I was suspended. I'm still waiting for uh, the committee to um, sit down and decide whether what I said was true or not. Um, and I think they keep putting it off because the simple fact is, I mean, I've got so much evidence that says what I was saying is true. I mean, particularly striking, if you go to the Holocaust Memorial in Jerusalem, one of the pamphlets they sell to tourists is about the deal that Hitler did with the Zionists in the 1930s. So I don't think anyone's going to accuse the Holocaust Memorial management of being anti-Semitic. Right, so you think they're delaying it because they think there's so much evidence that what you said is true. You, you, you probably know, Mr Livingston, the board... There's so much evidence. The board of deputies of British Jews uh, want Labour to expel you immediately after you reiterated your views on Hitler and oh, Zionism that... on, on Vanessa Feltz's radio programme yesterday. Hmm. I'm not surprised because if you actually look at the evidence that the... Uh, chairman of the Board of Deputies gave to Keith Bass's committee. Um, he opened by saying, for Ken Livingston to have said that Hitler was a Zionist is deeply offensive. Well, if I'd said Hitler was a Zionist, I wouldn't just have apologised. I'd gone straight to my doctor to check that I wasn't in the first stages of dementia. To suggest that Hitler was a Zionist is mad. He loathed and feared Jews all his life. But he did do a deal with the Zionist movement in the 1930s. Um, and that led to 66,000 German Jews going to what is now Israel and escaping uh, the, 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 the Holocaust. I'll just read you a, a quote from Marie van der Zyl, who's vice president of the Board of Deputies. In 2016, Ken Livingston mm. seems to want to rewrite history to make it seem like Zionism was responsible for the Holocaust, which is as false as it is grotesquely offensive. Every day that Labour does not expel him, is a stain on the party. Well, it's just quite simple. Go on the websites, check. You can see the, the interview with Norman Finkelstein defending everything I said. I mean, there are dozens and dozens of books that, by academics looking at the fact that Hitler signed a deal um, and worked with the Zionist movement throughout the 1930s. Now, I've not even criticised that. I mean, the Zionist movement had to deal with the fact that Hitler was running Germany. If they were going to try and save Jews, they had to do some sort of deal with him. Are you not bothered about hurting Jewish people by, by repeating your well, views? I said at the time, if anybody uh, has been offended by what I said, I'm truly sorry about that. But I've been struck by the number of people who've come up to me on the street saying, look, I'm Jewish, 
I know what you said is true. Don't give in to this bullying. And the simple fact is, that, and the reason I suspect we've waited four months for my hearing and still no sign of it, is that the people doing the, the work on this know that it, what I said is true. Right. It is, it, what, what is offending people, apart from anything else, is this conflating of, of Hitler with Zionism. I'm not conflating Hitler with Zionism, I'm simply saying Hitler did a deal which was signed off uh, uh, about three or four months after he became Germany's Chancellor and he stuck to that deal right up until 1940 and during that period um, 66,000 German Jews were moved to Palestine. He also, I mean, I mean, Adolf Eichmann negotiated a deal with the Zionist movement to give them guns which they could use in their underground army. I mean, he, he passed a law that the only two flags that could be flown in Germany were the swastika and the, the Zionist Star of David. I mean, it isn't just a one-off thing, there were a whole working relationship over the 1930s. And you can't blame the Zionists, they were there, they were in Germany. Uh, they had a horrendous and brutal government, but they had no option but to work with it. Thank you for your time this morning, Ken Livingstone, uh, former Mayor of London and uh, former Labour MP, uh, expressing support for his uh, embattled colleague, Keith Vass, who is still fighting for his political life and uh, repeating his views that Hitler supported Zionism. The Home Affairs Select Committee will meet this afternoon to discuss the future of its chairman, Keith Vaz, after the Sunday Mirror published claims he had paid for the services of two male prostitutes. At the weekend, the newspaper printed pictures it said showed Mr Vaz with the men in a flat he owns in North London. It also claimed that money was paid into an account used by one of the prostitutes by a man linked to a charity set up by the MP. The newspaper also said there was a discussion about using the party drug, poppers, a substance which Keith Vaz helped persuade the government not to criminalise as part of its ban on legal highs earlier this year. Mr Vaz released a statement on Sunday afternoon criticising the paper for paying the individuals involved and saying he had referred the matter to his lawyers. The Conservative MP for North West Leicestershire, Andrew Bridgen, said Mr Vaz should consider his position as an MP and that there should be a full police investigation and a parliamentary standards inquiry into the allegations. Keith Vaz was carrying on with business as usual in the Commons yesterday where he was putting questions to ministers. The Home Affairs Select Committee is expected to urge Mr Vaz to stand down as chairman today. They will give him 24 hours to reflect on his position before he faces a possible vote of no confidence. Well, we're joined now from Leicester by Conservative Councillor Ross Grant. Welcome to The Daily Politics. Ross Grant, you've heard there that Keith Vaz is going to be urged to stand down from the committee and that may well happen. Will that be enough in your mind? Um, unfortunately, I don't think so, Joe. Um, I think that um, there's an important principle here about um, lawmakers not being lawbreakers. And um, I think there's enough in these allegations and where they seem to be going that um, um, this could go a lot further. And I think Keith should really be um, immediately um, resigning from that committee, but should actually be considering his position as an MP. And, and probably, um, if he thought it through, um, to... Um, to actually stand down as an MP. Right. But as you have said, these are allegations. Nothing has been proven as such and no laws have yet been broken. Uh, these are allegations that have been made in a paper and Keith Vaz is going to consider what he will do. So isn't this essentially a private matter? Well, well I, don't, I don't think so. Um, I mean, I'm surprised if, um, if as part of a business transaction, paying for somebody else to have... Um, illegal drugs isn't um, isn't illegal. Well, that that is something I think that the police should actually be looking at. And I think there's um, there's a number of things here which um, could well be um, you know on the on the illegal side. Of right, but as you say, they could uh, well be. Also, but as it stands at the moment, um, these will be no yeah. doubt looked at. As it stands at the moment, it is a private matter. It's something that Keith Vaz has done in his private life. It may be wrong morally in people's minds. It may be wrong morally in your mind, but you think, as a result of that, he should not only stand down from the committee, the Home Affairs Select Committee, but he should also stand down as an MP? Well, well I do, but um, I think that, um, you know, it, 
you know, is it a private matter when you've actually got a lawmaker who's influenced um, influenced our laws and is acting on behalf of his constituents, his constituents in all of this, but isn't transparent about it? Um, and actually, um, I think when you're talking that there probably will be police investigations into some of this and the um, the details that we know shift daily, I think Keith needs to consider where does he think this could um, eventually end up right. and actually would he be doing actually the public and parliament a service by actually and, and his family by standing down now all right well well just uh, bear with us ross grant what do you say on that point that ross has made that is important that he is a lawmaker here and he has been at the head of a committee that has looked into the issues of prostitution has looked into whether poppers the party drugs should be criminalized on that alone surely he should stand aside permanently in terms of being the ch chair of that committee well, as you say, yes, he's a lawmaker, but there's no evidence yet that he's been a lawbreaker. Yeah, but could there have been a conflict of the, the conflict of interest is there, isn't it? Well, I think it would be a much greater problem if the, if there'd been hypocrisy there. You know, I think that would have been something that would have been far greater reason to stand down. If on the one hand he was advocating something publicly, that privately he was actually taking a different course of action. There is at least some consistency in the position he's taking. I mean, should he stand down from the? Uh, Home Affairs Committee, I think there might be some sense in standing aside from this inquiry on prostitution because not least it, the, 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 the controversy surrounding him is, is, is a massive distraction. So, you know, if it were me, I would certainly want to do that. But I, I think we have to ask ourselves to what extent is this whole issue in the public interest and I haven't yet been persuaded until I can be shown that there's illegality, gross hypocrisy, that it is in the public interest. Right, so you think this is in the public interest even though Keith Vaz and his lawyers have put out a statement and said that they think it has been about a sting, a yes, tabloid no, I agree operation with no, and you do, and you do, you agree with him totally on that? I don't see yet that it is in the public interest because no illegality has been shown to be the case and there has been no gross hypocrisy that I've been What do you of. say to that, Ross Grant, about the fact that this was an entrapment? It was deliberately set up to entrap um, Keith Vaz uh, and his private life and things that he does in his private life that some people may not like, but that it actually it's a matter for him. Well, but it's, it, it might have been set up to do that, but it actually is going into things which Keith does which are of public interest. And I'm really surprised Caroline Lucas doesn't think there's hypocrisy when Keith has actually stood up in Parliament and made speeches where he's implied he has no knowledge or, um, or, or no um, kind of knowledge about how poppers work and he's surprised that another MP has stood up and, and talked about that. And actually now what's coming out is that Keith is well aware of uh, of poppers, and he and he's not been transparent with Parliament or the public about that, uh, and that is hypocrisy. And so there is a public interest in in uh, I think how this um, story's come about. Except he's been an MP for 27 years, not without controversy. It's true, but his constituents have clearly felt that he's done a good job because they keep re-electing him. Should one mistake, if that's what we can agree to call it, actually end his political career? Well, um, I'm, I'm sure if you ask Caroline, she would tell you that um, she would think that Keith has probably been re-elected many times because of, um, of our parliamentary you know, voting system. And certainly Keith does well, but um, he, you know, he's no different to um, other MPs who um, are re-elected in various, in various seats. So I don't think it's um, just down to Keith's popularity. Um, but on, on this one, um, his constituents weren't aware of the position he was going to hold on these things or perhaps um, the details about it. And, right. um, you know, I, I think he needs to reconsider. All right, Ross Grant, thank you. Now, yesterday, oh, while we were talking, Keith Vaz has announced his resignation from the Home Affairs Committee. He says it is in the best interest of the Home Affairs Select Committee that its important work can be conducted without any distractions whatsoever. I am genuinely sorry that recent events make it impossible for this to happen if I remain chair. So that's breaking news that literally just appeared in front of me. That's about Keith Vaz standing down as chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee. I've been getting away with it all.